Welcome back friends. Today we're going to do a copper leaf with a monstera leaf. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not really sure. But anyway, I love the graphic quality of this leaf and we're going to do it on a wooden box with a copper leaf. Here's the results. So stay tuned. <music> So before I forget, two things. First, subscribe to my channel and hit that alert button because it'll let you know when I post a new video. And also, if you're an artist or anybody interested in marketing of any kind, stay till the end of the video where I do an art marketing beat. Today we're going to talk about ranking for your name in Google. Okay, so for today's project, we're going to be doing this, this leaf on this wooden box. I've painted it with black gesso and I'm going to start with a base coat of uh, manganese blue hue by Golden. We're just going to do like a rough application of it. Then after that dries we're going to do green gold which is a more transparent color. And then uh, I think I'm going to mix a little bit of white with this though. And then we're going to put some alcohol on it to have to have it sort of uh, make that a nice alcohol sort of uh, effect. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but my goal with this video is to show you some a little bit of technique with acrylic and still come up with something a little bit more interesting than just uh, you know, just the technique by itself. So let's get started and uh, let's see what happens. So I'm going to start with the blue. And I want some of the black to sort of peek through a little bit. And I forgot to mention that at the end, I'm going to do a copper leaf on top of this on just the background. So um, I don't have to be too careful around the background edges. So rough application. We're going to wait for this to dry and then I'll be right back. Okay, I decided to put a little bit of alcohol in the blue before I add the green. Just to sort of soften it up a little bit. So I'm just lightly sprinkling and we'll see if we get any feathering from that. It'll be very subtle because it's a dark blue on a black. So I'm just zooming in a little bit over this so you could see the subtle feathering that the alcohol made on the blue against the black. All right, so we are dry and I'm going to put a coat. I, I mixed green gold which is transparent with a tiny little bit of titanium white. And I want some of the blue to show through. And again, we're going to do while it's still wet. Hopefully that's not too much. I'm going to wait for this to dry just slightly. We are starting to see some of the effect of the alcohol. It's subtle and I don't, I'm not too happy with the brush stroke. So I'm going to wait until it's a little bit tacky and then I'm going to start brushing with a dry brush and we're going to get a different technique. Okay, I'm not sure if I waited enough, but See what happens when I brush across. It's less subtle. And I think that will make a nice background for my leaf. Okay, now I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but this was a dry brush. So the, the brush needs to be dry 
and um, of course now everything seems to be dry here so it's not doing anything more but um, this is a chip brush they call it at the paint store so it's short bristles it's kind of stiff and um, I like these for gessoing and I also like them for this type of where you're sort of pulling away some of the paint um, these are great brushes inexpensive okay so I have to transfer this design onto my box now there's two ways that I sometimes do this um, I use transfer paper and I get this at Blick and it's fine as long as you don't have a black board so I think we might be able to see it through the green if the, if this was dark I would use pastels I would smear pastels along the back and then I would use that to transfer it so I'm going to tack this in place and then we're going to use this transfer paper and I'm going to turn off my ceiling fan because it is blowing everything everywhere I'm just going to um, position this and tack it lightly so that it doesn't go moving around on me. And I can still get my transfer paper in there, I hope. You know what? I'm going to just tack it on one side. Now you really should do this with a nice sharp pencil. You don't want anything that's too dull. And you just go around the edges and you trace. So a lot of times I hear from people, oh, I could never do that because I can't draw or I can't even draw a straight line. Well, most people can't draw a straight line, uh, first of all and well you could still be creative and you can trace and just don't steal other people's artwork and trace that but you know you could do this kind of roughly you don't have to do this perfect i'm going to do it very rough actually and i am going to I'm going to increase this a little bit more because I, would, I just want it to be a little bit bigger. So let's see if it transferred. And it did not. Okay, this transfer paper doesn't like the acrylic. Now I have to figure out plan B. Okay, plan B. My little pastel trick. Hopefully this will work. And it worked. Very hard to see, but it worked. Yeah. It's very hard to see. But I am going to give it a good go. Um, so I have to use Frisket now. And the Frisket is going to um, go over the whole board, and then I'm going to trace. So what I might do is go over it one more time with this, with the frisket on top. Maybe that would have been a little better. So let me try that. All right, so I've, I've cut a piece of frisket. This is what I use. And I've cut it well, slightly bigger than the board. Going to get the corner started. Okay, 
And I'm gonna burnish it down. Now what we're gonna do is cut out where the leaf is and the background is going to have the um, gold leaf. So I am not going to do the, the transfer again. I was able to see the lines and I, I beefed them up just a little bit more so that I could see them clearly through the frisket. So I have a nice sharp blade and I'm gonna to start to cut around the edges of my leaf. I don't have to be that exact because I'm sorry, this is nature. There are no two leaves alike. So if I, it's not exactly like the leaf that I had printed out, it's not a big deal. Sometimes you have to keep burnishing down the edges. So the parts that I'm pulling up is where the gold, the, not gold, but copper leaf is gonna go. Okay, now we're going to start by putting on the sizing or the adhesive for the copper leaf. And this is the kind that I use. Um, I had to get help opening it because it was glued shut. Anyway, I want you to see this beautiful copper leaf that I got. Brand new package. Oh, and I'm already messing it up. Okay, we're gonna use our little wax paper trick to control it a little bit better. Move some of these things away, but we are going to use some wax paper to pick up the copper. And we are going to lightly, with a soft brush, we're going to lightly put on the sizing. Try to make it as even a coat as you can. I'm putting on two coats because I'm putting it on kind of thin. I just want to make sure I have enough. And 
especially in this little spot down here. I don't want to forget that little spot. Hopefully this is going to be contrasty enough. If it isn't, I like contrast. Um, I'll probably paint on the inner uh, edge with some glaze or something just to give it some separation, but I'm hoping that it's going to be fine. I'm going to put my brush in my water if I can find it. Okay. All right, so now we're going to just wait. We're going to wait for that to dry. And uh, as soon as it dries, I will be right back. So while I'm waiting for this to dry a little bit, I want to show you what happened to my brush after my fiasco with the purple leaf or the lavender leaf. I still have many, many little flecks in there and I have tried like crazy using tape to get rid of it. I may have to buy a new brush. I hope it's not going to ruin today's um, piece, but uh, I'm very upset. This was the brush I've been using for many years to do gold leafing, and, uh, and it's ruined. Okay, I think we're good. It's still tacky, just what we need for the leaf to stick. And I'm going to do a sheet that I didn't mess up. So let's go to peel back the paper very carefully. no ceiling fan pick it up with the wax paper so you just lay the wax paper down on it when you lift it up you've got wax paper with gold leaf with silk copper leaf excuse me copper leaf okay so we're going to just lay this down and I shifted a little bit so I messed it up Okay, I'm going to get another sheet. You could do this a little more carefully than I am. <laughs> I don't I don't mind because I like a rough application, but if you're trying to get a neater application then be be more careful. Try to just lift some of this, put it over that little spot on the bottom. I think I'm going to love copper leaf. I have never worked with copper leaf before, but I am loving it so far. And this is pretty good quality compared to that lavender stuff that I was trying to use a couple weeks ago, a month ago, whenever that was that I completely ruined. my artwork and it ended up in the trash. <laughs> oh, don't buy cheap stuff. Anyway, you use the soft bristle brush to brush away the extra. Around the edges. And this is pretty, a pretty fast application. It doesn't take very long at all. So this is a project for an afternoon, easy. Okay, so now I'm going to peel off my mask. Oh geez, got a little messed up. Okay, I'm gonna put that back down. <clears throat> Stick some more leaf in there and rub it in with my finger. Sometimes the oils from your hand helps it to adhere better. Don't rub too too much though, because then it comes off. Okay, 
so I'm going to be more careful. Okay, so some of my edges are still holding on to some leaf. So I'm going to use a rougher brush, try to knock some of it off. I guess the glue went underneath my mask and so I didn't get a very clean edge right around here but I'll be able to fix that because like I said I'm not happy with the contrast so I'm going to darken around the edge I've made a mask can you tell I have copper leaf everywhere okay so I'm using some of this um, ivory black glaze it's very very transparent it's just a glaze and I'm using a flat bristle brush and when I push it up against the edge I let it sort of the dark edge pool right along the edge and then I let yeah I just kind of let it fade out from there and that gives me a little more contrast And you could do multiple coats if you want it to be a little stronger. I sometimes do this on my large paintings using a transparent purple. I think it's called um, Prism Violet uh, by Liquitex. And that is my favorite for this type of application where I can get the sort of sharp edge along that pools and it kind of gives me a little separation. So whenever I'm painting a flower, I'm always got some of that purple on hand.
So the painting is complete. I think it came out kind of cute. And um, I don't know, I like the contrast. I wish I had pulled out the purple paint and maybe used that instead of the glaze, but um, I could still add that later if I want. But um, the alcohol was a good technique to give texture to the inside of the leaf. And the copper is absolutely stunning. So give it a try and let me know how you do. Leave it in the comments below. I would love to hear if you ever try any of my projects. So stay tuned. We're gonna do Art Marketing Beat next. So today's marketing beat is really good for anybody that's in business that wants to rank for their name or the name of their company. So, um, a lot of people know nothing about SEO. They think that it's like some trick thing that SEO experts do. And that's just not the case. Um, Google is looking for words on your page, not some hidden keyword thing, some grouping of keywords like what they used to do 20 years ago. That's not how it's done. So, but if you, especially if it's your name, if you're a blogger or if you're an artist who blogs or you're an artist with a portfolio website, um, or you just have a, maybe you're a realtor and you have a website with your name. You don't have to be an artist for this tip. So, but make yourself, you are the authority. So authorship is something that Google really cares about. So if you make yourself an authority by bl blogging about a particular subject, whether it's art or if it's real estate or anything, um, and you are the author of each one of those blog posts, that determines authorship. Now to rank for your domain name, it helps if the domain name, I mean to rank for your name, uh, it helps if your domain name is your name and possibly another word. So, um, in my case, my domain is just susanclifton.com. And if you Google me, you will see that most of the fir first page is me. It's either multiple pages of my website or it's my Facebook page or my LinkedIn page or any other, you know, uh, website that I happen to put my artwork up on. Now, the other thing that I want to really rank for when you Google my name is images. I want my paintings to come up or pictures of me with my artwork. I want that to come up on the images section. And then I also want to use other keywords when I do the images, because if people don't know who I am, then I want them to find me anyway, but then I want my name to be associated with that image as well. So, Try, try this for yourself. Google yourself and see where, where are you? How many links do you have on that first page of Google? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear about it. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed today's video and please come again soon. Bye-bye.